So in today's video, we are going to be talking about my sewing essentials. I'm going to share with you what I consider to be essential and to be super handy, especially as a beginner. So if you want to learn about all that, just keep watching. If you're new to my channel, my name is Leslie. My channel is all about crafting on a budget. I do Cricut, Sublimation, and sewing videos. So if any of those things interest you, please consider subscribing, joining my YouTube family. And let's just jump into this video. So the first the first thing I'm going to talk about are scissors. Scissors are super important for sewing or cutting utensils, whatever you want to call them. There's a few different types of scissors that I really like. So I think you need just the regular fabric scissors. These are by Singer. These are pretty affordable. I can't remember how much they are, but they're pretty affordable and they work really well. They have good grip. So I would say get yourself some regular fabric scissors. They don't have to be super expensive, especially when you're just starting out. But along with that, I think another essential are some small scissors that are curved. So you can kind of see these are curved right there. These work really great to get close to your fabric and snip the thread without cutting your fabric. So I think these are technically meant more for like embroidery but these i i absolutely love these um look around these are also by singer um i got these at myers for like two three dollars when they were on sale so definitely look around i absolutely love these these are singer these are not singer Ooh, these are westcott titanium i don't know why i thought they were singer and they're super awesome. I'll try to have everything linked down below if I can find it. But I really, really love these. These I use these all the time. All the time. It comes in handy. So another pair of scissors that I find to be handy are pinking shears. I got these on Amazon. They weren't too expensive. They were, I think, like $7. They were definitely less than 10 and they just look like this. If you've never seen pink and shears, they have teeth like that. And these work great to help with fraying. Like if you're using a woven to kind of clip that seam allowance and help with fraying. I really like these when I'm doing a project and I am trimming the seam allowance and I have to flip it. it I think it just allows it to have just nicer edges once it's turned out smoother edges so i think pink and shears are super super important now these are not scissors but this is what i use to cut my fabric a rotary cutter i have the fiskers rotary cutter that are like this and these are my favorite i have the regular kind and i don't know i just feel with these you, i just feel like i have more control so this one has a little lever that you push forward to make the blade come out and then this orange button retracts the blade i just feel like i have more control with this and i'm not straining my wrist my wrist as much as a regular rotary cutter so rotary cutters i think are amazing when it comes to cutting fabric which for your pattern i still have regular fabric scissors like i mentioned but I use this more for like quartering my fabric when I'm sewing or like if I just need to trim something. Um, I don't actually use this to cut my fabric when I'm cutting out a pattern. I use my rotary cutter and if you get a rotary cutter you're going to need a cutting mat. This one is also Fiskars. Get them when they're on sale. Joann's often has a sale sometimes where it's like 30% off 40% off of cutting mats and things like that this is a double-sided cutting mat I got this one on sale on Amazon I think I paid like somewhere around $30 for it I'm not entirely sure I got it on sale though and it's a really good size it's 36 inches by 24 so it's a good size for the space that I have so make sure if you're getting a cutting mat Get it according to whatever size area you have to work with. I also do have a smaller one by Cricut that is like 12 by 12. And that one's good if I'm just taking it upstairs to like cut a little piece of fabric or something like that. But this, 
big one works amazing so again make sure you're getting one according to the size that you have to work with on your desk you don't want to get a super big one if you don't have the space for it so another essential are pins or clips both of these are essential i think you need to have both not just one or the other I mostly use clips. If you've never seen clips, they just look like this. And they are used to hold your fabric instead of pins. I love clips. I use clips all the time. I have a lot. I probably I think I have like 200 of them. They come in handy. They hold fabric so much better than pins. Especially, especially if you're doing like multiple layers and things like that. You, if you're starting out, you can also buy these clips from Dollar Tree. They're in the craft aisle. They come in a pack of six, I believe. They come in a pack of five, I lied. They come in a pack of five. And these work good for when you have thicker layers and things like that. If you're just starting out, these are great. But clips are super affordable. You can get like a big pack, maybe 100, 200 pack for like seven dollars or so around there they come in handy i absolutely love them and if you're using clips having like a container that is open is super handy like i can just take the clips as i need them and then put them back as i'm sewing and taking them out so having a container you can also get this at dollar tree i got this at dollar tree helps a lot now pins pins come in handy when sometimes when you're working with wovens like silk satin you know slippery type fabrics or if you're like making a baby blanket with like minky fabric and things like that this can help keep like the middle part without shifting and things like that now i have two types of pins i'll have these linked below because i don't remember the real difference but i have some of these that seem to be super popular they're long to be honest i don't use them as much as i thought like sometimes it is handy that it's long but i feel like these other ones that i have that are more like this these just go through the fabric so much smoother and nicer without like making a hole in them so I just feel like these are much better. They're thinner than the other ones. The long ones with the design on them are thicker. And I think that's why it makes more of whole. Now, if you get pins, this is the essential. You need a magnetic pin cushion. I'm biased. But I feel like these are amazing. You drop pins, you can just put it down and it collects them. It's just much easier to keep them in one place you probably can't put as many as a pin cushion but i do have a good amount of them on here this one is the dritz brand i think and it was like less than five bucks i think at walmart so you can find some that are inexpensive especially if you're just starting out so you don't need to spend all this money if you're just starting out if you're just starting out maybe get some clips instead of pins but it's completely up to you. Having some good thread is super important. I really like a Guterman thread. When I first started, I just bought this cheap pack from Walmart that was like $8 and just brought a bunch of colors of thread. I have gotten rid of those. The cheaper the thread, it's going to not only break probably on your project, but it's gonna throw a lot of lint in your sewing machine as you're sewing, which can in turn build up under your machine and mess with your bobbin and just all these things so i think it's better to just have a good quality thread i really like guterman um you can amazon or even joann's has a bunch of like like kits that have a bunch of colors they're smaller like this though but if you're just starting it's great to have i bought it they're kind of expensive, so kind of get a, try to find a sale on them. But I think I paid like $35 for like 12 or something, different colors. This size, this is 110 yards. Or you can go to Joann's and just get bigger sizes. This one is 500 yard, 547 yards. 
and every so often joanne's will have a sale that will be like buy buy three threads get three free or something like that so, so just get it when they're on sale i would say if you don't get the kits with all the colors get colors that are going to be super common like white black um like a cream color like colors that you're going to be able to use throughout a lot of projects so that you're not like they're trying to buy every single color or you can just get them as you're doing projects but if you do that make sure you take your thread with you to the store so that you can match them together another essential are needles there's so many different type of needles so pay attention to that there's jean needles there's i have this is the most common one that you'll probably use is a universal needle so get yourself a thing of needles they're fairly fairly affordable especially on amazon you can get a big pack for a decent price but make sure that you're getting needles according to what you're working on so start off with the universal needles they're the 90 over 14 needles i think they have a few different universal sizes as well that's the one i use there's also quilty needles jean needles there's a lot of different size needle packs so make sure that you're make sure that you're paying attention to that i use the schmitz brand it's a really popular one but again starting with the universal needle make sure you're changing your needle after every eight hours of sewing or after every project whichever one but make sure you're changing it often so that your needle is working nicely on your fabric pattern weights super super important if you're doing whether you're doing paper patterns or you're using your projector so you can make some i made these when i first started learning how to sew super easy to make or you can go to the hardware store and you can buy some washers i have some washers here and these work great i have a bunch of them and this is what i mostly use way more than the pattern weights that i made you can stack them to make them heavier or you can use one or two in different areas to hold down your fabric while you're cutting out your patterns i have a bunch of them they come in handy i use them all of the time and they're pretty affordable you can get a whole bunch of them for less than 10 bucks a seam ripper a seam ripper is super important because you're gonna make mistakes you're gonna need to rip those seams if you've never seen a seam ripper this is what they look like that red part here's a little little tip or hack whatever you want to call it that red part you know sometimes when you seam rip where the thread went into the fabric there'll be like a little hole you can use the red part to fix that little hole so try it out it works i was mind blown but a seam ripper is super important i got don't buy the cheap sewing kits on amazon i feel like those are not good quality i had bought them when i first started get a good and those bring some seam rippers a lot of time they're not that great get a good seam ripper this one's by singer i'm gonna have it linked down below it comes with the mini one as well i use the bigger one for the most part but i do have a mini one and i really like it it was really affordable and it's a two pack so get yourself a good seam ripper a seam gauge this is not necessarily essential but if you're just beginning i think it is essential so this is what a seam gauge looks like you have this little part that slides so let's say you have to hem something a half an inch you can move this to the half an inch part and then you can mark on your fabric where half an inch is all around it comes in handy especially if you're just beginning i honestly eyeball half an inch now but it's definitely handy when you're just beginning so the next few things are not necessarily essentials essentials but I think if you're just beginning, they're super handy to have. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is this seam guide ruler. This thing is freaking genius. This one's by Madame So. And it has a ruler on the sides, on both sides, the long side and the short side. But what you do with this 
is that you actually stick your needle in the different seam allowances and then you can use one of these magnetic seam guides and they do, it does come on one just so you know you can put this you put this on your sewing machine and it will make it it'll be a little guide and you stick your fabric and your seam allowance will be consistent it's awesome it's great as a beginner when you're first learning seam allowances and even even as you keep going in your journey it's super handy to have i love this it comes in handy so much a stiletto so if you've never seen a stiletto it looks like this it's like a pointy stick this comes in handy with feeding pieces into your sewing machine that would be hard to feed with your finger this allows you to get close so you hold down the fabric and you can feed it into your sewing machine much closer than using your finger it comes in handy trust me and the other end is used for pressing your seams again i'll have this all linked down below super handy to have i use this for so many things so handy a chopstick this might seem so weird as an essential but a chopstick when you turn fabric and you need to poke out your corners to make them look nice a chopstick comes in handy it's not sharp and it gets in that corner really well um they're super affordable you might have one at home already these are great now these last two things i think are something that's great for beginners i still use them i use these all the time and that is a one fourth seam allowance foot and it looks like this it has this metal guide right here so that your seam allowance is consistent your fabric will go feed against that and you will always have a one fourth seam allowance this is the baby lock brand but you can find some cheap ones on amazon i'll have some link down below now along similar to that this is a stitch in the ditch foot or edge joining foot it has a metal guide here right here and this is here's what i use it i use it as a top stitching foot it's great i'm not the best at top stitching by myself just not the greatest so this just helps you keep a nice consistent top stitch all the way around and it's amazing and i think it's a must as a beginner when you're first learning how to top stitch and all that i love it i use it all the time for all of my projects that i have the top stitch you can stitch in the ditch with it if you don't know what stitch in a ditch is it's when you have to sew so let's say this is your seam right here you have to literally sew in the middle of that seam so that foot allows you to do that it's a really great foot and obviously you need a sewing machine sewing machines are super important and it's okay to start with a cheaper sewing machine i started with the cheaper sewing machine and i upgraded to baby lock brilliant i absolutely love it but i would say don't start too cheap because you're gonna outgrow that machine really fast i hear that brother machines are really good for beginners like the cheaper brother machines so maybe look into that or save up to buy a good machine one that's gonna last you a while like janome baby lock so just make sure you read reviews and watch videos on that so that you can see which is going to be better for you and think about what you want in a sewing machine do you want a semi-industrial sewing machine do you want a computerized sewing machine do you want a more mechanical sewing machine think do you want to be able to do six hack stitches or do you just want a straight stitch machine which a semi-industrial would be like the baby lock accomplish what features do you want do you want your sewing machine to cut the thread for you when it's done sewing do you want some decorative stitches on there make sure you know all these things when you're looking for a sewing machine so that you get one that you're gonna have for a while instead of getting one and then you'll be like ah oh, kind of wish i ha it had these features you know so do your research i would say get a sewing machine from a dealer because then you most dealers have you get free sewing classes or sometimes um you also get like 
one free maintenance you get a one-on-one -on -one lesson on how to use your machine or warranties they offer different things so i would say get it from a dealer and also try it out if you get it from a dealer try it out before you buy it when i got mine they let me play with it before i bought it and so i think that's super important so that you know if you're gonna like it or not because it's one thing to watch videos and hear people's reviews but it's another thing to actually touch it and use it so definitely go through a dealer i think that would be the best and so a lot of times dealers have good sales on them my machine was it's it's an expensive one it was a thousand dollars but it came with so many different presser feet and i really love it and again it came with free class and a free maintenance and all of that so definitely think it was worth going through a dealer so look into that as well what dealers are around you normally dealers um each dealer kind of stays with specific brands so if you're looking for a specific brand make sure that the dealer you're gonna go to has that specific brand and that machine you can always call ahead and see if they have the machine in stock which is what i did so just do your research don't jump into just getting a machine and yeah i hope this video was informative thank you so much for watching thank you for supporting my channel don't forget to subscribe give this video a thumbs up join my patreon and and i'll see you in my next video bye guys